recording the session now. Good morning, everyone, and um, welcome to this virtual art science workshop with Dr. Lizzie Burns. Thanks so much for joining us this Saturday morning. Um, my name is Tarcha and I'm the Communications Officer at the Royal College of Pathologists. And I'm joined today by Tim Ginger, who is the Public Hi. Engagement Manager. Hi. Um, Tim and I will be working behind the scenes. So if you do have any questions, please let us know using the chat function or by unmuting yourselves um, and talking to us. Um, as you may already know, uh, this week we are celebrating National Pathology Week. Um, and today is the penultimate day of National Pathology Week 2022. Um, we've been running online events every day this week to highlight how fascinating and important pathology is. Um, this year, our theme has been uh, pathology, past, present and future. Today, we're delighted to be working with Dr. Lizzie Burns on this event, uh, where we're exploring pathology through art. Lizzie is a science based artist and will be teaching us all how to fold our own origami beating heart, an antibody, and DNA. Lizzie has also developed accompanying resources, which you can find alongside lots of other pathology related resources on our website um, at rcpath.org forward slash pathology week. Um, if you'd like to know what it's like to work in pathology and find out all about uh, careers within pathology, um, you can check out our careers pages. That's rcpath.org forward slash careers. And we're also on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be sharing the links to all of the um, origami resources that we've used today um, and some um, related resources for, um, about pathology um, after this meeting. Um, and um, we'll also be sharing a, a short feedback form um, to find out how you found today's session. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Dr. Lizzie Burns, who will be taking us through the activities. Um, thank you so much and enjoy. Many thanks, Sancha. Um, Thank you for such a kind introduction. Most of all, the opportunity to celebrate with you all this wonderful um, anniversary, the 60th anniversary for the Royal College of Pathologists. And I think in many ways, maybe we don't we don't think about this so much, but actually pathologists do help us all, particularly when we really need help. If you think about it, about 70% of diagnosis is actually made by pathologists. So if you are unwell or a loved one is unwell, that little sample sent from maybe from your surgery or in a hospital is just vital to find out what's happened and therefore what the best treatment is. So they really do help us all. They are doctors and scientists behind the scenes. And um, it's just such a joy to celebrate how science really makes an impact and to celebrate their work. And I know many of you in the audience are pathologists, so thank you for the work that you do. And for others, I hope you're really gonna enjoy thinking about this as well. And these sessions, I think, will be very much celebrating life and health, actually, because pathologists do want to help people get better. So we're going to be celebrating the healthy, incredible body. And um, just going to show, show you a picture of, I suppose, life before, before the pandemic. Um, but we were doing wonderful events obviously in person. And I know that the Oxfordshire Library has joined us and here's some pictures from pre-pandemic. And I have been doing many projects with the college and bringing pathologists into schools to find out about what they do and to answer questions, but most of all to get creative as well, to get inspired. And actually a pathologist would often have to look at very tiny little things down a microscope at cells and they'd have to add those dyes, those colours to see what they're looking at. And it's a, in some ways it's a little bit like an artist, you're adding those colours and and bringing out the beauty as well. So it started actually with making some resources which are online for adult colouring in. And actually I've observed in hospital that adults enjoy colouring in. So it's not just kids who enjoy creativity. And it's a good way of helping with, with boredom, with loneliness, with isolation, with anxiety. And I think we've all become quite aware of looking after our well-being during the pandemic. And actually learning about ourselves is just so astonishing. I'm sure it will inspire you. So those resources, Adult Colouring In, are on, are on the college's website for anyone to print out and use, and I hope maybe you'll consider that. 
But of course, everything changed changed with the pandemic. And actually, I work as a creative specialist one day a week in a hospital at UCH, and I encourage people to get creative. And it was actually there a patient who asked me to learn how to how to do origami. I'd never really done it before, and she found it really helped her during times of difficulty, particularly in hospital. So that's how I learned from a patient. But we thought maybe we'd share some of the, the resources that I've been creating with the college um, and I hope you're going to enjoy them. So the first one is from some resources about the heart and um, I guess you, again you could download those as well but we're going to make a, a beating heart just ourselves just from normal paper. Anything you make we'd love to see it as well just to say so if you happen to use Twitter um, so the handle would be at rcpath and um, or the hashtags pathology week or rcpath60 so we'd love to see those if you wish so a heart is incredible it has to be busy all the time on average around 70 beats a minute and um, if uh, overall you have about 3 billion beats in your life it has to be busy all the time <laughs> Uh, a little model there of them. So actually I thought what we'd do first of all is we could do a quick bit of doodling and then we're going to transform our paper and fold it into our own little beating heart. So I want you to be inspired like the pathologist. By the way during the session any questions feel free to put them in the chat box. We'll have a go answering. Uh, that's Sharon and Tim from the college but also I think there's some pathologists out there as well who might be able to answer questions as well so please do ask questions this is a chance to learn while chatting and folding grab something to press on I have got just some E4 paper depending on where you are in the world maybe it's letter paper it's the same kind of thing so what we're going to be doing in a moment is we're going to fold it's an unusual um, an unusual thing we're actually going to be folding with a strip of paper rather than a square this beating heart is actually designed by someone called David Petty um, who sadly is no longer alive but I think it's just beautiful he's passed on what he found so we're going to make a strip and this is going to be um, three by three by one in dimension so if it was the end of an A4 paper about seven centimeters so Maybe I will show you what seven centimetres looks like. I would guess about that sort of distance. So if you think it's going to be three by one. So a strip like that, just roughly. And I want you to have a go at doodling some heart cells on there. So, so this is natural microscope picture there. And the colours have been added because otherwise you wouldn't see it well just get a bit inspired by that can you see they're very long they're unusual cells um they sort of almost merge into each other they're very long but can you see this little purple purple dots and that's their nucleus there where their dna is so maybe just do a quick doodle if you've got any felt tips or pencils and then after that i'll show you how to fold it so you can use different colors if you want if anyone wants to join in or has any comments if you are a pathologist and you have comments about this or want to say anything or you can put it in the chat box i'm just going to draw some sort of lines i'm just getting a bit of an impression of those chance to doodle no right or wrong here and it will transform as you fold it as well maybe add some nuclei and yeah, people have been discovering all sorts of things with origami as well. It really is art and science together. Um, and I guess quite a lot of pathology is also about patterns as well. And spotting anything unusual could be could be a clue as well. It's an incredible microscopic world that we are made of. Has everyone got a strip of paper? So a strip of paper. What I recommend to do is to, as I've done it, is to fold it, but give it a really good strong fold, make sure it's all lined up. So in a moment, my three rules for origami. First one is start well, it will continue well. Start badly, it gets worse. So really line things up and be really careful. My second rule is good strong folds. Good strong folds will make it work well, otherwise it unravels. My third rule, this is more for adults actually, 
remember it's meant to be fun don't take it too seriously maybe you'll invent something new if it's doing something different so i have i have folded a sort of a strip there and next i am going to tear it off but you are very welcome if you wanted to stay in the chat box if you needed more time or if you need me to explain anything so what i've done is i've given a very strong fold and then once you've done that i've done a little tiny nip there and i'm going to put my hand close to that edge um great oh thank you for helping Asher <laughs> and Tim we're a bit doing it all together that's a good idea so you can just see me now am i highlighted did you want did you want me to highlight myself as well we're we're doing this we're learning as we're going along aren't we these days <laughs> so have you got something like this decorated strip oh it's lovely to see to see you all great then we're folding together lovely so turn over your piece of paper to the right side and we're going to fold it in half in the middle so i'm going to take one edge and i'm going to bring it to the other and give a good strong fold that's it so a good strong fold there there we go and then open it up lovely awesome good drawing as i can see lily's house that looks lovely excellent next i'm going to take one side and i'm going to take this up and i'm going to bring this up to line up with that middle line so i'm taking that bottom line and i'm going to line up to the middle line oh you need some more time krishna yes let me know <laughs> hello penny <laughs> lovely to see everybody so are you happy we've all done that middle line and we're going to take that bottom edge and bring it to the middle and again i would recommend you take your time because that way it's more relaxing and enjoyable and it will work better because particularly when you're doing something new if you're patient and kind to yourself you'll get there right so we're going to do the same with the other side and can you see the color there is now appear appearing if you have colored in and again i'm going to match it up with that middle line if anything's out of line then you can reposition it it's the beauty of paper origami is japanese it the word is really comes from the japanese words ori means fold gami means paper that's what it means paper folding um and actually some of the origami principles are used in in medicine as well um with stents the idea of a tiny little stent that can be put in and it then expands and pops up and structures that center space as well so it is very much used within science and treatment so are you happy to use, does anybody need more help need more time or it's not making sense just let me know great so next i'm going to turn it round to this side so we've got a sort of a line there right great it's looking good it looks a bit like a paper airplane at the moment doesn't it <laughs> so we're going to take this bottom edge this diagonal now this is really crucial because this can often trip people up we're going to take this edge and we're going to move it around to the front but can you see i've not folded this area so it should stay nice and wide so i'm taking this edge just this and i'm twizzling it round and i'm lining it up again along that center line and then i'm squashing it down i'll do it again so it was like this and i took this bottom edge and i twizzled it around but i left this completely smooth so if it looks very narrow then then you folded this don't fold this area keep it nice and wide does that make sense to you <laughs> great looking good excellent so going to do the other side same thing so we're going to take this bottom edge and again twizzling it round to match so it's looking a little bit hot like i think maybe i did my strip a bit wider my guesstimate for seven centimeters i think was a bit out but it's all right <laughs> i'm sure all of our hearts are a little bit unique so <laughs> so it was like that and i twizzled it round and i did that on both sides 
Is everybody happy? On the back, you'll have squashed it down and it will look like this on the back. Great, I can see that's slightly out. I have also been learning the art of folding into a camera because I can't actually see what I'm doing directly, which is quite amazing. <laughs> Your brains are incredible too. Right, happy? Does it look like this? Ish? Something like that. Hey, I can see some hearts there. That's great to see. We'll get them beating soon as well. So the very top point, if we just take that top point and fold it back, we're just slightly smoothing it off a bit. We we'll take that top point and fold it back. We don't need to see the bit at the back, so it's all right. You don't need to cut anything. And next, we're going to do the sides. The sides are a bit pointy. Let's smooth our heart. There we go. And the same with the other side. There we go. So hopefully it's looking a little bit more heart-like. <laughs> great. It looks a bit complicated. It's all right. That's the great thing with origami. You can be as simple or complicated as you wish. There are some people who do very complicated things, but this isn't too bad. <laughs> but it is rather fun because it will end up beating, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> we are on a healthy beating heart. So we're going to turn it now to the back and we're going to work on the inner workings of our origami heart. Oh, my mine's slightly out. So again, I can reposition it till I'm happy. See if we get everything nice and lined up. So we're going to take this top edge and we're going to fold it along that middle line. So we're going to take that top edge and we're going to fold it along there, like so. There we go. And we're going to do the same with the other one. That top edge. And just say if you need me to repeat anything, keen that we're all, all round a table in effect together, working together. And a hospital is all about people working together. It's very much teamwork. And a pathologist will be working as a team. And in a way, I think a heart is always such a great symbol of healthcare. It's all about looking after, after each other. <laughs> what an incredible thing it is. There we go. Happy? Is it looking like that for you? It's great to see. Oh! We've got some creativity going on there. <laughs> Love it. Could you repeat the last bit? Yes, of course. Thank you, Thatcher. Has everyone... Oh, Monica's heart's beating already. This is the very practised origami. Oh, that looks wonderful. Tiny little heart. Wow, is that a little mouse heart? <laughs> Amazing. So we're going to take that top edge there. So make sure it's looking like this. I can see people. Gosh, people are leaping ahead. I love it. So that top edge folding inwards like that along that middle line <laughs> like so has everybody got that if you haven't you say oh and it's from david petty who designed this <laughs> there we go right so our next step they're looking great these hearts is to open up these little flaps i like to think of opening a present opening up the flaps this is a slightly mind-blowing bit and we're going to take that top layer and we're going to pull it forward and roll the sides in and what you're doing is making a little handle can you see making a little handle that is it but I'm going to show you again because I know it's this is all 3d and I'm showing through a screen so so it's close like that I opened up the flaps and I took that middle inside middle bit and I pulled it forward and I rolled in the sides to make a little point and I guess I'm trying to press that down so it's all nice and all nice and sharp like that and what you've got there is a handle hopefully hopefully it should be enough for this to work are you happy you've got a little handle there it's your little handle <laughs> and then if you turn it if you hold on to that and what we'll be doing is sort of squeezing there. And as you squeeze it, it even makes a sound. Can you hear it? Bumpity bump. 
So it's about 70 beats a minute. Whoa, I can see some fantastic hearts now. We want some healthy, healthy hearts. <laughs> How lovely to see. Oh, brilliant. I wonder, could we take a little screenshot of us with our with our beating hearts? It'd be really nice to capture. If I do a one, two, three. One, two, three. Lovely. <laughs> Fantastic hearts, everyone. I hope that's worked for you. And actually, uh, oh, could we repeat about the handle? Yes, thanks. Gotcha. Thank you for Let me show you one more time. Also remember this is all recorded so you can go back to it but we'd like we'd like you to have made it in this session since you're here we want that to happen. So it was closed there and I opened it up. It's like a little puzzle isn't it? Now with persistence and time you will get there and then I'm pulling the middle down and I'm rolling the sides in and I'm trying to make a nice little point there and I guess I'm trying to squash it all down so it's nice and sort of sharp and then hold on to that handle and you can see my thumb is underneath my fingers up there and i just squeeze and as you squeeze it it pulls the paper back but it even makes the sound of a heart too <laughs> it's beating it's beating we've got a lively happy heart <laughs> oh <laughs> that's interesting to hear children doing well and adults struggling that's great <laughs> And also, you may find that you end up inventing something else. That's brilliant. I mean, that's 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 the aim, isn't it? Is to encourage your creativity. So enjoy whatever you've made. It's special. So that's the first thing. And we've got healthy hearts. And I thought maybe the other thing that would be lovely to do next is to have a go at celebrating our body and how incredible it is. Because over the time of the pandemic, of course, we've been... Um, maybe I'll share, share with you the image again. We have been obviously very aware of, of viruses and vaccines and how does it all how does it all work well we created some resources as well for the college on viruses and vaccines really keen to help explain this unseen little tiny world but most of all to celebrate actually how our body naturally defends us um, inside our blood cells can you see in the background for me there's all these a painting that I've done which is of red and white blood cells so in our blood if you look to look at it down the microscope you'd see the red blood cells that carry oxygen and you can see some white blood cells which are these little light little soldiers that go around and they spot anything that shouldn't be there and they can go and attack and destroy so here they're, they're killing off a cell which has got a virus in that's what we want and one of the things they use is what's called an antibody you've probably heard about these things um, and they can spot and stick to stick to that maybe to that virus um, and then encourage your white blood cells to attack so they're sort of y shapes and they're a little bit flexible the tops of their arms would be the things that would go and and stick on a virus maybe i can show show this to you <laughs> this is an origami creation that i've been playing with and maybe the ends of your antibodies were going to stick on there and say go and get rid of this um, and that's that's the way that our body keeps us well so if you were to go onto our resources you can actually print out this piece of paper which you can fold up to make your own antibody and the picture comes together as well um, so that's something you could do at a later point but I'm going to show you just how to make this lovely shape it's a sort of it's based on a traditional vase but it looks like an antibody so maybe a quick doodle again maybe briefly look at these pictures and then in a moment I will stop sharing that and we'll go on to it so sorry I guess we also need to make a square don't we <laughs> let me show you how to make a square I will stop the share for a second. Right, so I have got this piece of paper still. Uh, maybe actually, I'm going to go on to another piece of paper. This will make it simpler. Get my piece of paper and I am going to fold it in half. There we go. So I'm just going to make it into an A5 piece of paper. So you see, I was nice and exact, nice and exact, good strong fold which is very relaxing I think as you do a good strong fold it's all nice and neat you just feel ah oh, that's better great so I'm now going to open up my A4 piece of paper or letter that's absolutely fine turning it over and I'm going to again do a little tiny nick and I am then going to put your hand nice and close to the edge on a solid surface otherwise it won't 
rip in the right way. You should be able to pull one side and gently, gently. If you've done a good strong fold, you should be able to halve your piece of paper like so. So I've now got an A5 piece of paper and I'm going to take the corner, we're going to make it into a square. And the great thing is any paper will work for origami. Yeah, I think it's all, and actually this, this does link, you know, with cells because cells are first observed by Robert Hooke a long time ago. Um, and he looked down the microscope at some corks and he saw these little like rooms and it was actually the cell walls that he saw there. But that discovery just inspired so many scientists to look do other th are other things made of cells? Cells means room, like you hear of a prison cell, it's like a little room. But actually this paper that we use is all will be cell walls that we're using from a plant. So we're going to take a corner and we're going to line it up. But I think the paper is so beautiful because it's made of this natural substance. So lining it up. And it's something maybe we take for granted, but it is a special material paper. And the origami came about in Japan because it was a very valuable, important material, first discovered in, invented in China, and it slowly came across to Japan. It was so valuable, they needed to do something very special with it. So origami is something very special to do with paper. Next, we're going to remove that rectangle. So if you turn it over, and if you lift up this little flap and fold it back, let's squash it down. So it looks a bit like a Robin Hood's hat. Good strong fold. And then you should be able to open it up. And if you open it up again, a little tiny nick along that line you want to tear. And again, put your hand nice and close to it. Then you should be able to tear it off. Now up to you if you want to add any colour to it. Do you want to add any colour to it? Colourful antibody? I'm going to add a quick doodle. I don't think it matters what you doodle on this one. So I'm just going to do some quick little shapes, make it a little bit more interesting. I'm just thinking of the, we saw the sort of picture of an antibody. There's no colour at this scale, but why not make it colourful because it looks so much more interesting that way. Quite fun to see how it will transform. Whatever you want to put on your antibody, or maybe what you want to want to defend yourself from. We're probably all on the same plate for that, aren't we? Ah, thinking yes, cat making a square. Right. Let me show you one more time. So if you take a piece of paper, in this case I halved my A4. So I took my A4 and I folded it in half and I did a good strong fold and I tore it off. Then to make the square, I'm going to take the corner and I'm going to line it up at the bottom like so. So make a nice little sharp pointy point there. There we go. And then we're going to remove that rectangle. So you could cut that off with scissors, but I'm doing this all without scissors. So in which case I am going to turn it over and I'm going to take that rectangular flap and just bring it back until it lines up underneath. After a while, you'll get the hang of this and want to make squares out of everything. A lot of origami is based on making squares. Good strong fold like that. Looks like a Robin Hood's hat opening up because for a lot of you maybe you haven't done origami since you were a child or hopefully children you'll have been doing a little bit of origami before but it's encouraging that precision which is quite scientific and like the pathologist as well you need to need to make sure things are right again a little tiny nick then you'll be able to tear that off but it's worth keeping your hand close to the edge on a solid surface and you would open it up and it's a square Oh, thank you, Rosemary. That's very kind. <laughs> so if you want to, you could turn it over. You could do a quick little decoration if you wish. Yes. And for me, my inspiration is always science. It's just what, how incredible we are. Made of so many cells working together. <laughs> so 
Have you got your, your lovely piece of paper decorated on one side? Great, great, lovely, excellent. Oh, I'm enjoying these decorations. Great, unique, like ourselves. So if you take your piece of paper and if you turn it over into the white side and we're gonna fold it in half to make a, tri a rectangle. So yes, as mentioned, I also work one day a week at UCH Hospital in London. I absolutely love that work and I encourage staff and patients to get creative and it's a way of encouraging relaxation, whatever position you're in, to get focused on doing something. Small with paper can actually just bring such joy. And so it, I made a rectangle, so I purely folded it in half like so and then opened it up. So I think this is a good way of relaxing because actually we feel stressed when things are out of our control and if we can do something small and controlled and beautiful it will just help us feel that bit like we can we can overcome things we can. Great so open up your piece onto the right side and next we're going to take the top and we're going to bring it to the middle. So actually since the pandemic I have been recording an origami film every week and on Wednesdays at two o'clock in support mostly of healthcare workers really, but it's for everybody and, and patients too. So the top to the middle. I've now changed actually to every fortnight so I can blend it in with hopefully getting back to some work in person. There we go. So it's the top and I brought it to the middle line. And if we do the same with the bottom line, bring it to the middle. And just let me know if you need me to explain anything. Um, yeah, doing it on the surface because I know I can be more accurate that way. So it should look like this. Lovely. It's like a little cupboard, isn't it? Oh, what could we open up? <laughs> Thank you, Griselda. That's very kind. <laughs> and actually during the pandemic, thanks to as well the lottery, I managed to get a grant to be able to make 25,000 origami inspiration leaflets that went out to hospitals, um, particularly for the arts coordinators to offer those to staff and patients because it's such it's been such a, a difficult time for everyone. We're actually going to have some new ones soon as well, so excited about that. A little cupboard, so we're going to do another halfway line, so just take this and fold it upwards. Again, making sure everything's lined up like so, and then opening up again. Lovely. Lovely. There's a cupboard that can bend in half now. <laughs> we're now going to take the bottom edge and we're going to bring it to the middle line. Excellent. Yes. So actually I have, um, yeah, doing lots of origami in hospitals. It's just been a really good way of supporting people's well-being. And all you need is paper, so it's kind of clean and easy and practical, but it offers as much challenge as you want, to be honest. Bottom edge, and we're going to take the top edge and bringing that to the middle. So it looks like a little square. In the end, make sure they're all nice and lined up. And if you have any questions about pathology, please do ask. But this feels like a nice gentle celebration, doesn't it? Celebration, body celebration of the work that everybody does to help look after us. There we go. Right, I think I'm going to tilt it around this way. For some reason I do that. So it's again, it's like the cupboard. Happy with that? Great, so a little cupboard there. So we're going to open up just one side, like so. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a diagonal fold there. So to do that, I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to bring it up, twist it round almost to meet that line. I recommend you do this on a solid surface. I think I'm going to have to do this on a solid surface. Right. So I am going to lift this up. So it lines up along that middle line and then I add that as a little squash there to get that as a nice little fold. Can you see? I've managed to add it. So I took that edge, brought it up there and gave it a squash. And I'm going to do the same on the other side too. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it round, line it up. 
The good thing with origami is you just have to completely focus. You can't really be multitasking on other things. So it gives your mind a complete and utter focus. And that's very good, I think, for our well-being. So it should be looking like this. Happy? Great. Now you should be able to just push it inwards and squash it down. And they should be fairly, hopefully, fairly lined up. If it's not, again, play around with this until it's, until it's nice and pointed. Can you see I'm also playing around with this? If you tilt it around, you'll see it looks like a house, actually. <laughs> Which is where we are. Like so, I'm going to bring it back there and that way. Happy, everyone? Good. Glad to hear you going strong. <laughs> and if we open up the other side, same thing again. We're going to take this bottom edge and bring it up there. Oh, did you want me to repeat that again? Okay, right. I know this is, you, you can see it does require a lot of attention and focus, doesn't it? So I, I hope, Nika, that you're at this point. And if you open up this one side and you take this, this edge, line it, push it up there, you should get yourself a diagonal line across that square. Same with the bottom. Good strong fold there. And now, just as it is, you should be able to just push it in and make sure that you've got nice little little pointy bits there and there. You're very welcome. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So opening that up and taking that edge and we're going to line it up along the middle. So in the resources that we've made on viruses and vaccines, I was working with immunologists, people who study the immune system, uh, doctors and obviously of infectious diseases and we've got all sorts of resources in there uh, that you could make. You can even make a little flip book with the life of, of a virus. I'm afraid I just find these things so fascinating um, but in many ways that also helps to understand why you need to do things, how things work. I think it just Again, it also supports our well-being as understanding. So I've done that little diagonal line. Same thing again. I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to line it up there. Okay, opening it up. To really concentrate on all of this. Pressing it down. Again, being nice and exact. And the same thing. You should be able to just then push it in. Great. And get some nice little sharp points, like so. Oh, Monica's made a nice little windmill from it, because this is what it is. You might have come across the windmill, yes. <laughs> but we're going to make it into an antibody windmill, I think. <laughs> you can see where I've got the idea from. So as it is, if you just take each of these flaps and just, you can fold it back along that diagonal line. It's a really nice little shape-shifting shape, this actually. And each one of these I'm lifting up and you can push one way and another way, just get it a little bit more flexible. This could be many things, actually. Again, it's a nice one for playing with your imagination, that edge. And really, the pathology is based on science. Science is all about the imagination. You're looking at the abstract tiny often. How does it work? Asking questions, thinking of ideas. Okay, lifting that up. There we go. So you've hopefully got something like this. Have you got something like this? That's a funny looking thing. Great. So you've done that for each of these. It could be many things. That's Monica. Right. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one corner and flip it back. Hmm. How do I explain this? Maybe you could look on the back if you want and take one corner and match it up there. As I said, it's very shape-shifting. So on that blank side, twist it down. It's a bit like a Pac-Man as well. I don't know if you've seen Pac-Man <laughs> or a little fish, yes. So you've got a sort of V shape at the top and you can squash these bottom bits. It's also 3D, it's only in your hands this will start to make sense. Can you see this is, this is a little shape you can play around and find so many different shapes with it. Uh, it's like a little vase at the moment, but I think we can round it off so it looks a bit more like an antibody. <laughs> so 
So to make it look a bit more like an antibody with these arms that would go and stick to a, a virus or something. So if you get this, has, it, has that worked for everybody? Are you all okay with that? Yeah, it's kind of amazing, isn't it? We're going to get that top triangle and bring it back there. We're really just trying to round off that shape. So can you see? I'm trying to line that up like so. Rounding that off. Same with the other one. That top tip. Bringing that top down there. a bit more the right shape great let's do the same with these bottom points bringing that tip over there it should nice and neatly fit in there like that and the same with the other one other point popping that in there or make your own little homage to the amazing antibody Right, these little bits are a bit flappy, aren't they? They don't look that elegant. So we could tuck them away. Yes. So to tuck them away, if you just open it up a bit, and we're going to use the lines that you've already made. So I guess I am now going to sort of open it up, and I'm just going to tuck that in along the line that I've made. And you can see then it disappears. So let me show you how it was. So it was like this. And I open this up, twisted it round, I open it on the inside and I push that along the line that's already there and it's just tucking it away. And if you can do that for all of them. So again, bringing this up, I'm opening it up a bit, flipping it in, pushing it down. And at the moment my top looks quite good now. I need to do the same with the bottom. So again, it looks a bit, doesn't look great with that flap. So I'm opening it up again, flipping in along the line you've made. It's only in your hands, this will make any sense. Maybe it won't. Maybe you'll have invented something new. And then pushing it inwards. And I'm going to do the same this side. <laughs> it's so shape shifting. This little bit. And actually antibodies are quite flexible too. Those little arms at the top could move around. And again, bringing that in. So I actually did a drawing of an antibody which we've managed to piece together so you can fold it up to make this shape. That's something which is on the resources for the college. Which anyone can use. Oh, don't know whether you've managed that, but maybe you have. I hope so. Yes. Fantastic antibodies. It may even, I don't know, it may even just stand up. So you can, oh, you can have it as a standing up thing if you wish. Oh. <laughs> so this is not a drawing of it. Yeah. Make your own celebratory <laughs> antibody on a stick. I guess it doesn't, it doesn't whiz around, does it, in the same way as a windmill. <laughs> but. You know, it does something pretty amazing. And actually with origami, if you really get into this, you can make amazing things which really look like uh, viruses. So there's all sorts of things you could make and make your own virus as well. Or from folding and tucking things up. <laughs> Maybe that will inspire you more. So we've only got a short little spell, um, but we've got time. I can show you the principles of how to make your own DNA helix. Because I'm thinking about the... The amazing, there's so many specialities in pathology, looking at the body in so many ways and being able to help with diagnosis. And genetics is such a huge area. So sometimes maybe people have been born with some kind of genetic disease and actually figuring out what's happened can really help people. So that's cytogenetics. Um, and also things like cancer is often about a mutation there. So figuring out what's happened can really help. And increasingly genetics is used within diagnosis as well. Um, I also love the thought that actually um, origami is all about folding. And in a way, so is DNA because your DNA encodes proteins. And proteins are like 
little beads of a necklace and it's the way that they fold up that makes their shape and that gives their function so everything actually it feels like it's about origami your body is huge complex <laughs> organization of how things fold up and that that equals their function so here's one i made earlier true blue peter style um so in a moment we'll have a go at making a strip of paper and it's effectively like a little ladder and then you do little diagonal rungs on the on the diagonal rungs on the ladder and it will then sort of fold up and make this double helix i have done this so actually if you to do lots of little long ones i don't think we'll have time at the moment to do this but if you do lots of long thin ones you can glue them together and make this little circle and things like bacteria have a little circle of dna in them as well so you can really see how it's got the, the double helix shape there so how to do this, I would recommend, there's nothing exact here, but to get you going on the principle, I would recommend that we do a strip of paper. So, and I recommend giving a bit of colour because I thought it looked really nice to have. I'm quite keen to show you how much you can do with very little strip of paper. That's all. Because you don't want a square, that's not going to work for DNA, it's not the right shape, so... I made a little strip of paper and again same technique of doing doing of a strong fold then you can do a little tiny nick and I'll show you the principle but this will be I think something that you'll need to maybe continue with almost yourself I am again tearing that off and if you want to have a go at adding a little bit quick bit of colour I've rather enjoyed adding a rainbow of colours you could literally just scribble and it will look good. If you have any colour, give it a go. And our DNA inside pretty much most of our cells, red blood cells are an exception, but most of our cells contain DNA, the instructions that make us encode us. And each cell has about two meters of DNA in it. So a cell is like the tiniest of dots, but inside it's two meters of DNA. So it has to be very carefully folded up. That was the sorts of things that I studied as a scientist. Fascinating. And the curious thing about humans is only about 1% of our DNA is actually genes. So genes encode proteins, which is what you'd think DNA is all about. But only about 1% of it is, is um, encodes proteins. Bizarre. Wait, there's so much to still understand. Actually, a lot more of our DNA um, holds viruses, so they they can integrate into your DNA and um, maybe do nothing, or maybe they do something. But they have they have helped even actually to make so there are there are some positives with viruses. Um, gene involved in making a placenta to be able to make mammals um, originally came from a virus, so there may be this all sorts of oh, yeah all sorts of areas that we just don't understand so i've got my strip of paper so maybe it's easier for us to work now on the white side and really i just want you to get the idea of a principle we're just going to divide it in half and divide it in half again divide it in half again and so on so you're going to make equal rungs of a ladder so that's the starting point so take your piece of paper and fold it in half as i said i think this will be something that you will build on so i'll get you started but I would recommend you continue with this today and enjoy it. I'm going to fold it in half again. And I'm going to fold it in half again. So each one I'm just dividing up. That's the principle that you're, that you're playing with until they look like the sort of sensible rungs of a ladder. And just enjoy it. It's very meditative, this dividing up again. So I reckon for me anyway, I'm quite happy with that as my sort of unit. And all I'm doing is dividing up each of these little areas. You can, another way of doing it is bending them back 
and then you can maybe be a bit more exact i find that a useful way of doing it but this is a chance for you to learn as you do it it's less in a way instructional but it's more the idea hope you can see that you can see how you can really get immersed in origami hours of entertainment there's lots of amazing stuff on youtube it's very easy for anyone actually to do origami it's a good way maybe of spending some time together as a family actually i wonder touch did we have did we have a poll i know it's a little bit later in the day but it'd be fascinating to hear why why you're here are you here for the origami are you here to learn about pathology or maybe time together as a family so i think we'll raise a little poll now if that's if that's possible Tatcha. and all you're doing is dividing up your paper that's great ah so our options what brings you here today was it origami was it to learn about pathology was it family time was it relaxation or all of the above Okay, I'm just continuing with my little ladder. Oh, that's pretty equal spread. Oh, the origami's coming up well. <laughs> I'm not surprised. We need more origami in our lives. <laughs> can only be a good thing. But it's, it's a good mix, actually, isn't it? Really good mix. <laughs> oh, thanks, everyone. Much appreciated. Good to see that. Shall we share the results? Stop sharing and I think, do we get a little result there? Share the results. There you go. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, good mix. Hmm. How are you doing in the folds? As I said, this is almost something we can chat along at the same time with. So if you've got any questions about pathology, I guess we've actually only got five minutes. Where does time go when you're folding? It's amazing. I'm going to keep going, make my little ladder, and then I'll just explain the principle of it. So I'm keeping on folding. Can you see? Nice little. <laughs> That's it. I think it's always a hard one to give feedback when you're doing origami because your hands are going to be busy. But please remember, this is more of a principle than anything. And something for you to continue with. So maybe if I show you next how to, how to fold it. So the idea with, um, with making it helix is, first of all, if you get them all, all of these lines, almost the same way around. At the moment, they're going, they're like a, a accordion going back and forwards. But actually, it's better if they all go, for example, all go in, like so. So I'm doing that, and it will sort of curve around. But I'm just getting them all to go inwards. Mm -hmm. I said the rustling of the paper. So it's like a little curvy piece of paper. <sighs> That's lovely. And what we're going to do is just do a little diagonal line. So from that corner of your rung to the other. And the idea is just the same on each of them. I can find it sometimes easier almost if you fold it back. So you can really clearly see from that edge to that edge. And be nice and exact and open it up can you see i've got a diagonal line and do that with the next one and that's what you'll continue doing and later on you'll find that you, you'll be able to gently fold it up and it will form a sort of spiral like shape this is one i did earlier and then when you release it it will be a double helix shape <laughs> i feel like i've left as if i'm giving you quite a puzzle here but you will get the hang of it. Again, I'm on to my next rung and I'm going to do it just the same direction, that's all. But celebrating our incredible DNA. We're probably all now going to be so engrossed, it's hard to even think what else we should be doing now. <laughs> so again, doing these little diagonal shapes. And then later on, you'll find that you'll be able to just 
fold up along the lines that you're making so you go from one edge to the other it's something for you to play with with time you see and it starts to twist it around in that one shape so I wonder why we while we try and figure that out so I know we're getting close to the end how does that happen I do not know hopefully it's a good sign so we are going to flip through there so as Thatcher mentioned, it would be really grateful if you're able to fill in um, some feedback afterwards, but to, I think the best actually is now. If you can put in the chat box um, anything you want to say about the session, has it been useful, has it made you feel, um, you know, would you like to see more things like this? Um, I don't know, Thatcher, Tim, are there any specific questions? Just write down whatever you want to write really would be really grateful so do put that in there um, and Thatcher and Tim will also be sending details of where those pages are so you can download and actually fold your own antibody picture or about the DNA more and there's also videos as well with pathologists so you can meet them while folding or colouring in which we hope will be really enjoyable too um, I don't know whether there's anything else there that you want to add and the idea with these rungs is keep adding to it. You can see this could be the next hour, couldn't it? But get that principle of it, the diagonal each time along that rung and it will start to fold up into this incredible little double helix shape. So this is one I was doing a little bit earlier, but it looks quite nice if you've got the different colours. So you'd find that you've done one direction and the next and you will gently, gently be able to find that you can fold up along the lines, back and forth, back and forth. And I recommend it just as, a, as something to play with and consider how astonishing it all works and doesn't get tangled up. <laughs> That's it, Tim. I don't know whether there's anything you want to say. Please do write things in chat box now if you can give your if your fingers a, a little tiny break from the folding um really really appreciated thank you so much lizzie that was a really fun session um i hope you all had fun as well um it was really great to see your creations and um, that you're holding up on the screen so um thank you for sharing um lizzie mentioned earlier but if you would like to tweet about your um lovely origami pieces then please do um, we're at RCPath on Twitter and you can use the hashtags hashtag Pathology Week and hashtag RCPath60 to celebrate our 60th anniversary this year. Um, yeah, that, that's it from us. Um, please do continue uh, exploring pathology related origami on our, um, on our webpage and um, we'll send those around after the session. Um, but that's, that's it from us. Um, yes. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank we really you. enjoyed your company. And Lizzie, thank you so much. You're brilliant as ever. And hope to do this again in the future with you guys. Thank you so much. Have a lovely rest of your Saturday, everyone. Aww. Have a lovely weekend. Bye bye, everyone. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.